Yo 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 is our family Roxy Roxy Diaz Good morning Good morning Roxy Buenos dias Thank you for having me fellas How you feeling Long this time morning? Long no see I'm excited to be here I can't believe it's the first time That I've ever been here So this is this I don't is I don't believe This that. is the first time Evan 13 years? I believe so I gotta I'm, go through the archives We I may it. have to go through the archives But I'm almost No you was I'm up here almost, Absolutely mm. Me Google she Google. was definitely up here I remember I don't she remember. took a picture With all of us I remember in front of the wall I, I don't know what, what What were you promoting? At that time, he was promoting recall. something. You don't see no pictures, y'all? No? I'm looking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking, that means it's not there. That <laughs> means it's not I'm there. Looking. No? What did, if Johnny knew that instead of take the pictures, it never happened. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you don't see nothing? Interesting. I don't no. so. Yeah, I'm almost positive. Oh, wow. I'm pretty positive. Although, you're welcome. Thank you. Nothing? Appreciate it. Love nothing? the Thrones, fellas. Love the Thrones. Well deserved. Wow. Well, welcome. Thank you. I don't see it. Damn, that's crazy. How Roxy ain't been up here in 13 years? That's a, yeah, that's crazy. Yikes. Well, that's crazy. It's the first time for everything. That's, that's right. Everything. I ran into Roxy. Even at this age. A couple of what? A couple of months ago at a homecoming, right? Yeah. yeah. We were at, uh, was that FAMU? It was at FAMU. It was at FAMU. You and was uh, and promoting you your car stage. show back then. Yeah, and I brought You was doing a documentary. Doing a documentary for the HBCU. Was doing a documentary yeah, HBCU for documentary, yes. trying to get more students to go to HBCUs. Yes. And teaching them and telling them about HBCUs. And I seen you on the side of the stage. And, and... Mm, I didn't know Roxy was... A surprise. A surprise. So okay. I just seen my sis on the side. I'm like, oh, Roxy, come up here. You shouted her out. And I'm going to ruin the surprise. He ruined the surprise. surprise. My God. I was like, it wasn't my time yet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was ruined. not my turn to go up stage yet, but it's, surprise. it's okay. Oh, right. It still was a surprise. And it was a really, really good time. Too. Yeah, it was. Shout out to anybody that went to an HBCU or, or yeah. any of those students that's graduating this year. Currently a full-time student right now at HBCU. Who, right you? Now. Yeah. You went back to school? school? Yeah, I'm at school right now. Which one? I'm at Bowie State University. Shout out to Bowie State. Oh, really? What you made yeah, right now? I'm finishing my journalism degree. Actually, you know what when I started when I started school I didn't know what I wanted to do mm -hmm. and then my radio career picked up mm -hmm. and then I dropped out of, I dropped out of college and then I got 106 after that and then I've been moving ever since but it's always been a goal of mine to go back and finish school. So I'm finishing my bachelor's, and right after that, I'm going straight into my master's. So you're program. just doing it to do it because you've already been successful in the media. Business. Yeah, but you know, it it is yes, doing it to doing it. But yeah, because I don't want just one of my brothers being the only college graduate. Yeah, I want to yeah, be yeah. able to say that I got that. Yeah, so. people would say why? Like you've already accomplished what most people try to get by graduating. Uh, it's a self thing. I've always mm -hmm. wanted that diploma. So Dope. you know, I've always wanted, and I feel like what I learned. I serve more for my fellow classmates mm -hmm. as like, since I'm in all the broadcasting classes, like as somebody else that they can ask besides our the professors teacher. and yeah. the teachers. To Probably know better than them. That's difficult. Yeah. Well, they never call on you, huh? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> never nah but it's you. a different, like I'm more, you know, you get to online mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And I actually sub sometimes for the teaching one the teacher. Wow. Them. So, yeah, I hope that should be, you that. You should get extra credit for that. I do. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> trust me, I ain't in class Char every day. She can't, she can't fail, Charlotte. Man. She, I think she knows what she's doing. That would be kind of crazy if you fail one of those That would be this wild. This new math ain't math for <laughs> me right now. The new math is kind of difficult. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Killer anyway. Mike will be joining us today. Killer man. Mike has an album out. The name of the album is Michael. Calling it an album is an understatement. Uh, I, I, I think it's a, a, a classic, but I'm also also biased because Killer Mike is in my top five mm -hmm. favorite rappers of all time. So, mm -hmm. so we're gonna play uh, some some cuts off his we album. Definitely, this we're gonna have a great conversation. Play some music off his album. And I'm either tired or still high from the edible last night. I'm not sure. Yet. Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe oh. a little bit of both. Maybe a little bit. We'll you dabble it out. in edibles. Yeah, I do. Because when you hugged me this morning, you did something a little strange. I ain't no, like I didn't. It. No, yes, I you didn't. did. Yes, you I did. I gave you a hug. Oh no, you did not. I gave you a you hug. Did not. No, Wait, no, are they like the go to sleep edibles? Or are they like the ones that are you supposed you know to like what? chill out? It's actually it's the Mike Tyson ear joints. So Mike Tyson has a line of edibles that uh -huh. looks like ears with that's bitten. Jesus Christ! <laughs> and I took one last to night. Everything I took it because I was so after working out. So I was like, you know, it's, it's why you feel the way you yeah. feel right now. And yeah. Woke up like, whoa. <laughs> no wonder. What's going on? Oh boy. Are you sore? Not no more. <laughs> well, there you go. Not, right. not not so high maybe, but not so. All right. Well, <sighs> when we come back, we got front page news. Tesla Figaro will be joining us. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club on BET. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest co-host Roxy Diaz here mm -hmm. and let's get in some front page news good morning Tez 
Good morning, DJ Envy. Good morning, Roxy and Charlemagne the God. Peace, Taz. Good morning. Let's jump right into it. Let's talk about this airman who leaked files. Now he's getting some charges. Yes, he is. Yesterday, a federal grand jury indicted Jack Tashira, a Massachusetts Air National Guardsman who posted dozens of secret intelligence reports and other sensitive documents on a social media server on six counts of retaining, transmitting classified national defense information. If convicted, he will face up to 60 years in prison. So looks like we got more folks running around posting and stealing uh, classified information. What, what social media site was he posting on? Yeah, he's accused of taking from computers at an intelligence unit at the Cape Cod Air Base and sharing it with online friends, hoping to impress them in group chats Jesus. on a social media platform popular with gamers called Discord. Mm -hmm. So it, this was all for, I don't want to say for the gram because it wasn't on Instagram, but this was all for social media, all about stunting and fronting on social media. That's Once again, it got somebody in trouble. The crazy mm -hmm. thing about uh, posting this kind of information is actual and factual information, but you probably don't even realize that because there's so much misinformation that's always posted on these uh these yeah. platforms and right. it's only gonna, it's only gonna get worse with the the rise of chat gpt and artificial intelligence like wait till next year when the presidential election happens if y'all thought misinformation ran rampant the, the past several years oh my god right you but think, i heard he was trying to like put together like a whole movement of anti-government people and really like uh, getting young people involved because mm -hmm. he was a little bit older so like he mm -hmm. was influenced with, like, like young 18 year olds 20 years olds that were just coming in into the military and it was crazy that's, that's, what, that's why they're going jail, to, jail. that's why yeah, they're jail. going to those sites like Discord and they're going to those sites like uh, Rumble because they know that's where those young impressionable fresh new mm -hmm. voters are mm -hmm. exactly those new minds are yep mm -hmm. well, now one thing for sure I'm embarrassed I just want to say as an Air Force mm. veteran I am embarrassed as hell and um, this is just ridiculous so alright well let's move on to Conor McGregor yeah, 34-year-old UFC star Conor McGregor, uh, who, by the way, was the highest paid athlete in the world in 2021, uh, has been accused of sexually assaulting and battering a woman last week after game four of the NBA finals in Miami. Now, the demand letter said that McGregor allegedly aggressively kissed a woman, forced her uh, in the restroom and forced her to have oral sex and attempted to sodomize her. Uh, the victim's attorney also says that the NBA Miami Heat security and his security all aided and abetted the assault. Uh, he also, some of you may have seen uh, this on uh, kind of trending on Facebook or when I Facebook or social media last week, uh, how he was accused and caused a little stir at Grant Game 4 in a promotional skit that went bad with the Heat mascot, Bernie. Mm -hmm. uh, while he was promoting a pain relief spray, uh, he hit the mascot twice, causing the mascot to seek medical treatment after the game. Oh, that mascot done lost his moment, huh? That mascot was supposed to uh, be the one pressing charges. Well, he's still, he's still going to sue. But the he's thing with all these venues, if you ever been to any of these venues, there's cameras everywhere. Not in the bathroom, but there's cameras everywhere. So mm -hmm. they'll see exactly where that girl went, where she snuck in the bathroom. So they'll able to see Wasn't all of that. was in the bathroom. The video is actually out oh, right now. the video now. is out? Yeah, the video is out right now. And I'll show it to you guys in a little bit. Oh, there's but a he video? Actually, oh, yeah, there's a video that he actually picked her out of the crowd and escorted her into what looked like the bathroom area. Yikes. Yeah. Jesus. So escorted like force or... Like she walked in. What was your perception of? It didn't. Uh, I want y'all to look at the video and mm -hmm. see. But to me, it didn't look for us. It looked like she got chose out of the crowd. But that doesn't say that whatever happened was in consensual. The bathroom, in right. the bathroom was mm -hmm. consensual. I'm definitely not saying that. But there is video of him picking her out, out of the wow. crowd and escorting her to the Oh, bathroom. see, I didn't know the video because I was about to say it's just an allegation, an accusation at the moment. Nah. Not, I thought there was nothing to talk about, but it is a video. Nah, well, that's different. Yeah, yeah, well, you can't allege that when, when there's cameras everywhere in the damn venues. You but know, you like, got everybody in the audience, like, like you know, camera phones up, taking pictures mm -hmm. of everything. There was, like, a huge crowd, mob mm -hmm. crowd around him at that time, and he was able to pick that one girl out. But well, like what Roxy said, yeah. you don't know what happened in, in the bathroom. In the bathroom, right. Yeah, yeah. just because right. you well, got chose didn't mean you could set. Right. Yeah, and um, just as another point, in 2018, uh, he was also accused of raping a woman uh, in a hotel penthouse again, accused. Uh, but those charges look like they, that didn't really go anywhere uh, as well. And then in 2019, he was uh, fined uh, for punching a man in a pub. So, All right. Those Jesus charges Christ. were later dropped as well. Wow. Well, that is front page news. Tez, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Absolutely. All right. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Uh, maybe you're having a great week and you're going to do something amazing this week. And maybe you just want to say that you're blessed. Whatever it may be. 800-585-1051. Our guest co-host, Roxy Diaz, is here. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. 
This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hi, hey, man, this is Trey, man. What's going on, DJ? Trey, what's up? Get it off your chest. Hey, man, look, I was just, first of all, I want to say, man, you're doing a great shit with the car, with the car show and everything. And, and I'm a car enthusiast myself. I build cars every year. I wanted to make it to the one in Houston, but I couldn't make it this year. What I'm kind of cars car. you build? Well, I build old school. Most of the time it's G bodies, you know, Malibu, Monte Carlo, mm. Grand National. I'm, like look, I'm looking for a 70 Chevelle convertible. You got, you got something? Ooh, I ain't got nothing like that. My pops got a 68 Chevelle. He's supposed to give me when, uh, you know, when he, when he. Well, don't back on that one. Right. My pops had one. He, 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 he said decide to leave us. Like, we right. got a choice. Yeah, right. Like, I'm going to die today. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, what's, up to, what's up to Charlamagne, man? Peace, King. I wanted to make it to your Black Effects podcast. My girl actually does a podcast called Bitch, You're Doing a God Job. She's a uh, parenting coach, a very intentional parent. So, we'll y'all back. should follow her. She should be on the show one day, man. Okay. Her name on Instagram is Destiny with an I, dot N. Destiny with an I, dot N? Yeah. Destiny with an I dot hand. She got like four hundred or some thousand followers. She got a podcast. She got one point five million on TikTok. She did a TEDx talk um, this year. Okay. She got the number one selling parenting book on Amazon. I love it. Called oh, Very Intentional Parent. And she cooking. Salute to her, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Hope she don't leave you. Yeah. She got a show. She got a show on Ellen <laughs> Tube, and they had an article on her in Essence magazine. Oh, that's dope. I love the promotion yeah. that you are giving your lady. That's all. I'm absolutely. For this. Man, listen, listen. She amazing. She cooking. Her- all right. Well, that's all you got for us today. Nigga, phone went out. Damn, lost. That's hilarious, man. Oh, there you and go. We couldn't make it. What you say? <laughs> she, 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 was hurt. Like she, she couldn't make it. She was hurt by because she broke her foot the day before. Oh, we doing it again next year. Black Effect Podcast Festival will be an annual event. We'll be back in Atlanta next year with it. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yes, sir. But what I wanted to get off my chest was, man, oh, I've been winning the call to talk to y'all about people going to college, and they spend all this money in college. I'm a crane operator in Savannah, Georgia, at the port. Mm-hmm. And they paid me seventy grand for ten months to train. So I did my training. They paid me to train. Right. And then now you go make six figures. You got guys that work with me that've been there for five years that make two hundred thousand dollars a year and hold no student debt. Yeah, I mean, college isn't for everybody, right. but you know, like I said, I I enjoy yeah. my time in college, and and I feel like if I didn't necessarily go to Hampton University, I don't think. I would be as well rounded and got me to the position that I was on radio if I didn't take that step. So for me, I think it was worth it. Yeah, for some people it's worth it, but a lot of kids, they don't know what they want to do and they go and end up doing that. And I think that's a real big rip Yeah. Because I originally became a, a boom crane operator where I traveled around. It cost me 10 grand to go to school for three weeks. Wow. All right, brother. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I made 90 grand my first year. I respect that. I think everybody think should go out there and learn a trade, man. Yeah, I think trades are great too. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, what up? What up, DJ MV? What up, brother? Get it off Yo, your chest. Uh, it's E from Brooklyn. Uh, Charlamagne, Roxy, what's up? Hi. Peace, King. Good morning. Hey, I wanted to talk about that Conor McGregor situation. Mm-hmm. Um, my thing is, like, I, I personally think, like, a lot of females out here be looking for a come up some kind of way. You know, because if you look at the situation, this man walked up to you in a crowd, picked you up, and brought you in the bathroom. What do you think he was bringing you in the bathroom for? It doesn't matter you know what I'm if you were chosen, it, though. It doesn't matter. If, huh? That doesn't mean that you have the right to go ahead and just forcefully put yourself on on a woman. That doesn't give you the but right just knows? because you choose. And yeah, okay, you in a crowded crowd and you bring them back. Yeah, of course, you you know you you getting this one opportunity <clears throat> to be close and, and personal with someone. But that doesn't give you the right to sodomize and rape a woman at the end of the day as what they're supposed to Well, you don't know if he did it. You don't know if he did it or not. Yeah, she could have she she consented to it and still call the rape. No, 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 no. She could have consented to it and still call her rape. It's the same thing as like what happened with Mike Tyson when he got when he got convicted for a rape charge. What you think he was bringing? He's bringing a woman up to a hotel three o'clock in the morning for. 
Well, see, this is the thing. It doesn't matter if you go up there and you feel uncomfortable and you don't want to do anything. You have the right to say, nah, this is not exactly. what I want to do. And nobody yeah, has did. any right to be to force any woman. You yeah, can change well, your mind at any given moment. She might have went in that bathroom, thought she was getting a picture and an autograph. And then he, when he tried something, she said no. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 he might have tried something and she said no. Either right, way. Either way. Either way. Like, yeah. I think what Roxy is saying is true. You know what I'm saying? Just because you get chose don't mean that uh, you consent. But even more, man, Conor McGregor's a married man, you know, with a pregnant mm-hmm. wife at home right now. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean? but we also don't know their situation. They might, they might have an open relationship. Man. We don't know, oh, that's but, true. but we don't know what happened in that, in that bathroom. You must be having an open relationship if you just pick a woman out of a crowd and with all the like cameras that. out. All the cameras out. Right. Hello, who's this? DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God. Good morning. OG Rob, oh, what up, Lord, OG? Have mercy, OG Rob. OG Rob, don't, you calling up here to try to uh, avenge that loss you took to Carlos Miller last OG week? OG was spitting, man. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't call that a loss, but you know, you know, I still got to keep the tradition no, going, no, baby. You, you had some bars when you said uh, I'm stepping out the. What you say? I'm stepping out the Tesla with the velour on. What'd you say? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, the velour, the velour suit, an all white matching a Tesla. Yeah. Nah, you had some bars. I'm not going front. Yeah, appreciate y'all. Appreciate that. But listen, man, it's Friday. Y'all know what it is, baby. It's ball time. Ball time. Okay, let's spit some balls for us, OG. Uh, all right, check it out. I said a brand ambassador for real MCs with only a few left. Conducted by the street committee in front of projects. This platform is different. So what I'm spitting on display is 4K for BET from Brooklyn to Broadway. Don't roll the dice. Testing the truth from a surgeon in the booth. How you want it, dog? Close casket on the proper soup. It's what I do for landing the face. For Cartier diamonds choking for space. It's blue in the face. I'm smooth with it. There's something you gotta be born for. Hit the button just to close the door. I'm stacking a lot more. Always had that hustle in me. For master tennis just turned into a verbal assassin morphed identity. You heard? Okay, mm. all right, all right. I got some bars, OG Rob. Let's do it. Like the number 23 in the red and black. Roxy, Miss 106 in Park is back. I do it like no <laughs> other and attract Charlemagne like the Ringling Brothers. <laughs> I'm a married man. I wish Envy would understand. I only got eyes for my wife and not his beige hand. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> OG Rob, we appreciate you, brother. Yo, appreciate y'all too, brothers. Have a good weekend. Y'all the family. Appreciate it. Okay. Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051. Now, when we come back, Roxy got your rumor report. Roxy, give us a little tease what we're going to be talking about. Uh, a little bit more updates on the young Dolph's murder and somebody found shot and dead. Damn yes. it, man. Uh-huh. All right, well, happy Friday. It's the Breakfast happy Club. Friday. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Happy Friday. Yeah, for me. I wish I was a singer. I would thought I wish I was a singer so bad. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have our guest co-host Roxy. And let's get to the rumors. This is the rumor report. I am Roxy what, 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 what you want to know? Just to bring the realness and the truth to the story. Listen up, listen up. On The Breakfast Club. Hey, talk, talk to me. Shout out to the producers for doing that. Taylor, Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, Taylor that, was, that was dope, T. Thank you so much. Taylor made it. I love that. All right, so the person of interest in Young Dolph's murder was found dead. Yikes. So CEO TZ was what they called him, but his government name was Joshua Taylor. He was found dead in Memphis shortly after being named a person of interest in the murder of young Dolph. Now, the reports are saying that the police, they got a call about a man down on Wednesday around 1 p.m., but it's been confirmed that he was actually killed the night before. Unfortunately, he was killed so quickly after being named as a person of interest in the case that the police did not even get an opportunity to question him or interview. So he was just named Jesus. a person of interest. He was... There was no nothing to his name. They don't. We don't even know why he was named the person of interest. But everybody is exp- uh, speculating that the streets took it to the streets, and Memphis are Memphis is basically seeking justice for themselves on Young Dolph's murder. The, the streets always know, it. but I thought yeah. they. I, 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 maybe I'm confused, but I thought they had arrested the two. The two. Now this is. I think this was somebody new that they mm-hmm. said was a person of interest. Mm-hmm. But one thing, you know, I, I did the car show in Memphis with uh, PRE and, and Dolph's estate, and you know seeing so many people pull up just to see that Dolph Museum, you see how much they love Dolph. Like, Memphis loves Dolph, and they're really still hurting, still bleeding, and, and still upset about the loss of Dolph, so they're still healing. So, shout out to everybody out in, in, in Memphis, man. Right. right. That was that one. Young Miami confirms that she would have a baby with Diddy 
It's really, that was a hard turn. No, it wasn't. Sorry. It went from death to life. Yeah, death to life. Well, there mm-hmm. you go. Well, after that Ag Bad summer, you never know what could happen. Uh, definitely getting pregnant after that Ag Bad summer. Winner, I'm telling you that right now. They asked you on Miami on Twitter, said, if you got pregnant by Diddy, would you keep it? And she said, yeah. I mean, I, 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 mean, yeah. I think most people who got pregnant by Diddy would keep it, right, Charlamagne? Would you? You would keep it. What does that mean? No, I, <laughs> I, don't like Y'all. Word, I don't like the way you worded that. Come on now. I love this whole Diddy, Young Miami, whole vibe movement. They both they seem They give happy. me life and they, it, I've never, as long as we've known Puff, I've never seen him like this. Mm-hmm. And it just looks like he's enjoying himself and enjoying the relationship so much. They both seem they seem very happy. They seem like they're having a great time. And, you know, if she's happy, he's happy. Who do yeah, judge? All their I know is after I act bad summer, you're going to have to sit your ass down for nine months more than like <laughs> <what> throughout, <laughs> throughout the fall and winter. I don't think Diddy's going to get to a whole summer. He's going to be talking about the person about that gets pregnant. Oh. No. Okay. I don't know. Rihanna definitely made pregnancies fly now. So I feel Rihanna like pregnancies, pregnancies are definitely fly. not the same as what they used to be. Well, Young but. Miami will be baby mama. What number, what number will she be? I don't know. I lost count. Oh. I think five. Five. I, I think, think five. five. I don't remember. I think five. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, BET Awards coming up. You already know. Everybody's talking about it. Sunday, June 25th. And it's a big year. <laughs> is everybody talking about it, Rossi? I, I don't know who's talking about it. Let me just, just ask you. You said that, Charlamagne. Look at me like, yikes. Can asking. I please, you know, put a little sugar oh, on asking. my my old workplace? Okay, anyway. It's 50 years of hip-hop. <laughs> Jesus, it is. okay. It is. Who's performing? And uh, Let's we got 69 boys. Oh, Ooh. No, that's fine. No, listen. No, Drop one of clues. You serious? I'm here for the 69 boys. Drop okay? one of clues, boy, for the yes. 69 boys. <laughs> 69 was... Uh, whoop, whoop, there it is. Yes. I was confused. Whoop, whoop. Uh, Cause it's whoop, there oh, it is, and it's whoop, there it is. What else we got, Roxy? Uh, Big Daddy Kane will be showing up. Oh, okay. They had Yin Yang Twins. Yin Yang Twins. Do you want to read this? Is nope. it my rumor report? I'm sorry. Right. That's right, Gosh, Roxy. I'm only Ooh. here one Drop time. Drop on the clues bomb for Roxy, Jesus. damn it. <laughs> you need um, to get swab a mentor. She got a little spicy on me, you right? You know what? Anyway, E-40, Fat Joe, Ja Rule, Kid and Play, MC Light, Percy. I love that they put Percy, Master P, Miller. We don't call him P no more. Did he change his whole situation, too? He grown. Okay. He grown, grown. All right. Yin Yang Twins, like you already mentioned. Warren <laughs> G, who I'm also excited to see. Yo-Yo and Uncle Luke. I love this, and I'm going to tell you why. We just had this conversation a little while ago. The BET Awards this year for the 50th year of hip-hop should have been all about hip-hop. It should have yeah. been centered around hip-hop. If you had it centered around hip-hop, you wouldn't have to worry about the writer strike and everybody else because exactly. it would have been all about just the musical artists and the hip hop artists like the whole award Correct. show should have been, should have been hosted by an OG hip hop mm-hmm. artist the whole thing should have been a celebration yeah. of hip hop and I know they probably got to beat the hip hop awards so they didn't want to clash but this is the year yeah, to clash. Yeah, this is the year to clash. It yeah. definitely Absolutely. is the year to clash. Yeah. LL yeah. Cool J would have been an amazing host. Everybody, whoever is 50 years of hip-hop. Fat Joe exactly. could have been another amazing host. He did a, a great job last time. And what I love about this moment right now for hip-hop and unless you've been like under a rock or something like that and you don't know what's going on the celebration of 50 years of hip hop has been giving so many hip hop artists right now old school and new school so much That's work right. yeah. everybody's Absolutely. out on tour everybody's getting interviewed Charlamagne you just did uh, Soul, Soul of a Nation, Nation for yep. ABC which is going to be airing this Monday mm-hmm. with exactly. Angie Martinez produced by Angie Martinez Angie mm-hmm. Martinez yeah. you, can I get it I'm out jeez yes Goodness gracious. You know what? <laughs> Give me the Palo Santo. Yeah, Give me the, the Palo Santo. Yes, I'm going to get it. I'm sorry, is that the same one that Janelle had? Yes. Okay, this That's is the same thing. Because, Lord. All right. Yeah, but Celebration of Hip Hop is going to be amazing. 50 years. And, uh, yeah, shout out to Angie Martinez and Soul of a Nation. Shameless plug for me and my ABC family. And. They- that's going to be airing on Monday. They could have had Angie Martinez hosting the BET Awards. They could have. They could but have. celebration of hip-hop, 50 years of hip-hop? Yes. I'm That'd just saying, that would have been amazing. They could have had Puffy acting bad up there for 50 years of hip-hop. Well, he was up there last year. I and mean, then he, didn't he win so. an award or something? Yeah, he, that would have been, been a great host for it, too. And, well, Angie's doing something. Well, let me see if they announced what Angie's doing. Oh, Angie's so here you're you about to, Now you're going to step on Angie, Go too? I'm not. I'm just going to say. Same way you've been stepping on Roxy? No, no you've been stepping on Roxy. Oh, it's something against the Latino women. Is that what it is? Let me just check. I just don't want to, you know. Oh, you're texting to make sure you know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just pulling it up on the, on the site. That's what, are you, all. what is? What are you talking about? I don't want to say it yet until I see, and I don't see her name. So, all right, she didn't announce right. yet. Shout out to BET, and we'll Salute be seeing BET. them in uh, two weeks. Okay, mm-hmm. happening. All right, and that's your rumor report. All right, and salute to Angie Martinez too. Yes. All right. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. Tesla and Figaro will be joining us. We'll break down what's going on in the news, and then Killer Mike will be here. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club on BET. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same.
Our Audible Pick of the Day is In the Room with Peter Bergen. Go beyond the headlines in this weekly podcast and get the real story from people who were there. Listen when you sign up for a free trial at audible.com slash breakfast club. Hey everybody, it's DJ NV, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now let's get into some front page news. Our guest co-host Roxy Diaz is here. And Teslin Figaro, welcome back. Yes, good morning, DJ MV. Roxy got it spicy hot in here today. And Charlemagne the God. Peace, Tess. Now let's go right into a Detroit area city bans LGBTQ pride flags on pu- on public property. What's that about? A Detroit area community has banned LGBTQ flags from publicly owned flagpoles after a tense meeting that raised questions about discrimination, religion, and the city's reputation for welcoming newcomers. Some members of the All Muslim Council said that the pride flag clashes with the beliefs of some members of their faith, but businesses and residents are not prohibited from displaying a pride flag on their own property. Now, council members also said that we want to respect the religious rights of our citizens. You guys are welcome, but why do you have to have a flag shown on government property in order to be represented? You are already represented. We already know you are here. Now, in protest, a woman speaking during the public comment portion kissed the woman standing next to her. The council voted uh, to display only five flags, including the legislation to to say this is not what we want on um, public property. But people can still do it, you know, but government property is saying um, they had to make get a vote to say what flags do we want to, you know, display on government property. So, yes, the city, what you would call a city council, you can call legislation, but city council rule ordinance or, you know, some type of rule that they put in place. So just public property. So you you can put it on your own property, but anything, but nothing public. Basically, yes. Businesses can still put it out, but they had to decide, hey, what flags are we going to put on government-owned property? And so we're going to go with these five, and we're not going to include the LGBT flag. Obviously, they wanted to include the flag to say, why not include it, you know, with all the other flags to show that the city's diverse, and they said no. Well, that's their right. I just wonder if they do that uh, with other flags. Like, will they do that with, like, Police Lives Matter flags? Mm -hmm. Or will they do that with Black Lives Matter flags, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, obviously that's not one of the flags that they're considering. Not one but of the five they got. Um, when you talk yeah. about a, a city that is heavy, heavy, you know, Muslim faith, uh, they believe that this is, you know, something that goes against their beliefs. So, wow. Now mm-hmm. let's talk about forty-two percent of CEOs say AI could destroy humanity in five to ten years. Yeah, 42% of CEOs surveyed at the Yale CEO Summit this week says that AI has the potential to destroy humanity uh, five to 10 years from now. Uh, The survey included responses from 119 CEOs from a cross section of businesses. These CEOs included Walmart CEO, Coca Cola, uh, the the leaders of IT companies like Xerox and Zoom, as well as CEOs from pharmaceutical, media, and manufacturing uh, industry. The business leaders displayed a sharp divide over just how dangerous AI is. 34% of CEOs said AI could potentially destroy humanity in 10 years. 8% said it could happen in 5 years. 58% said that nothing will ever happen and they are not worried. So, big divide on that. I've been saying that for months and I don't understand how we don't see this coming. The biggest issue in this society right now is misinformation Mm -hmm. and the lines between reality and fantasy are already blurred. But with the rise of AI, they're going to be obliterated all together. We're not even going to know what's real and what's not. At all. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but how do you decide what's what's good, what will work, and what will not work, right? Well, because- I'll tell you what don't work is the AI app I downloaded for my school because uh, it was giving me the wrong answer. That's cheating. Shut wow. up. Wow. I wasn't cheating. It was wow. homework. That is cheating. I was trying That's to get help cheating. on my homework. That is cheating. That is cheating. I was trying wow. to get help on my homework. I did not say it was a test, and I did not say it was a quiz. I was trying to get some help on some math. I told you the math wasn't mathing for me. I took a picture, used AI, inputted it in the computer, and it was wrong answer. That's so been happening. I'm, I'm done with AI. You heard the story about the lawyer who uh, mm-hmm. try, try, yes. tried to do a the whole case, case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. based on case case yeah. None of the, case, none of the uh, cases they gave him yeah. ever existed that he tried to say. But on, on those right. angles, yes. But when you talk about AI, like the fact that, you know, easy pass, like that, that would be considered AI. So how do you use AI and how do you not use AI? Man, I don't know about that. I know about if... Imagine um, somebody puts me on the phone with Roxy and it's you talking crazy about both of us. Well, they're already doing that. And then that. you walk into the studio 
after hearing that call, but that wasn't even your voice. They're already doing that. They're already using mm-hmm. people's voice and using the technology to be yep. able to like manipulate voices, and you think that it's somebody else totally talking to you, mm-hmm. and it's not. I mean, we've seen it. I was on the show, Alter Ego, you know, where they were using the AI and that avatar technology just to be able to manipulate performances and, and what you see. Like, it has its good and bad things, but when I think in the industry standpoint, mm-hmm. I know that we're all shaking and scared because we're like, this is really going to change lives and take jobs away. Mm-hmm. Like, absolutely. So, it, it's, yeah, it's not a good thing. What is it going to do to us? in the surrogate. Yes. What is, uh, what's it going to do to us emotionally and mentally when we don't even know what the truth is? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. imagine the anxiety that's going to be in your body every day because you don't know what's real and what's not. Correct? Nah. Yeah. But then, you know, there's some pros to it, like we talked about on yesterday with helping with breast cancer research. And so, um, you know, just keeping people aware, I think it's important we keep these conversations going where we address the pros and the cons and, you know, just continue to filter through this because it's obviously not going anywhere. So It's it's so weird to me that that we live in a society where all of these CEOs can say this Mm -hmm. could destroy humanity. Are uh, you know like this is just a, this is a threat to our society, but mm-hmm. well, we're willing to take the risk. But human curiosity, <laughs> like, never, like, it's never gonna stop. Like human, mm-hmm. we're always as human beings, we're always gonna try to push the envelope and see how far we can go. There's all, even though we know it's wrong for humanity, unbelievable. We're still gonna see how far we just to say we create it. Now let's go lock it up back in a little in a case and nobody touch it. But then somebody's always gonna it, end up. It, it's a that tough box. one. Yeah. It's a tough one because like she said, like Tez just said, you know, like you know, it's it's helping with breast cancer. I mean, I'm sure it'll be more accurate when it comes to doing you know procedures on people uh, even when you got the police dog which is a form of AI that you know there's a bomb know or something like that we don't know if this stuff gonna work though right like we don't know I'd rather send in a police dog to, to check to see if something if, if it's a bomb than a, a regular human being that gets blown up though until that police dog bites your ass just cause you black cause that's what, how it's been programmed <laughs> The robo now police they, dog or the they did regular dog? dog? Oh, okay. I'm like, wait, the AI dog. I, I just want to bring up this point. They did say that uh, there was some similar concerns with Y2K. You remember how everybody was saying, you know, everything's going to shut down Y2K. Mm. And, you know, a lot of these CEOs had concerns and then it turned out not to be true. I don't even know why This is not apples was, apples because it's yeah, two totally right. different things. No, but I know. remember Y2K, but was it a form of technology? What was Y2K? They didn't know if the two, the two of the thousand would roll over after the 19th. Huh. And it that's, was literally that, just that glitch. Yeah, that's not a program, no. Like, ChatGPT is a program. Artificial intelligence is a program people can use and download to their phone. Yeah, though. but Y2K was more of, it was more so because of the banking system because they were afraid that, the, like, freezing of assets and people weren't going to be able to be, be able to allocate their funds and mm-hmm. have access yep, yep. to things. Mm-hmm. And not everything. Mm-hmm. You just got to remember anything that has a date was going to go haywire. Mm-hmm. Like, because they didn't know if it was going to be able to roll over or not. Mm. The fact that we're old enough. Y'all remember that, Charlemagne? And everybody was, the fact that we were, was talking about 1999. You got 21 you know? year olds talking about what was that? Well, I, I remember it, but I don't remember that? it being a program. I don't remember it being like something tangible. Well, know? it's all well, it's all tech. It's, it's connected to technology. You know, this is certainly not apples to apples. It's obviously been advanced. And, you know, and they weren't then, talking about it like this. They no. weren't saying it's going to be the end of society and humanity as we know it. They weren't talking about Y two K like that. We, weren't, we, yeah, didn't, we didn't have, have social media then, like though. this. Yeah, right. we didn't, like, we didn't, didn't have, have social media like that. Right. So, all right. If well, I told you that there's a forty two percent chance you walk in that room, you're going to die. You're not going in that room. <laughs> you're not going in that room. Depends what's yeah. in that room. I was about to say yeah. everybody going in that room. My kids and family in that room going in that room. All right. Well, that is front page news. Make sure you subscribe to Teslin Figaro's podcast, uh, this great shot, no chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. Uh, she's going to be breaking down all of the stories you heard this week in front page news and follow Ted's at Teslin Figaro on all social media platforms. Now, when we come back, Killer Mike will be joining us. He has an album out today. It's called Michael. And we're going to kick it with Killer Mike when we come back. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club on BET. The Breakfast Club. You know, there was an article that came out that said for the first time in 30 years, no hip hop single or album has went number one this year. And when I think of the brilliance of this project that mm-hmm. you are putting into the ecosystem called Michael, it's out today. By the way, it's out right now. Yeah, I've, I've 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 heard it. I think it's a classic. I want everybody to make their own decisions. But when I think of the brilliance of this project, when the album is as special as Michael, how do you promote and market it? Well, it's is it's, it is is more than a classic. It's a generational statement. Mm. I would have settled with a classic a few years ago. I would have been happy to say, oh, that should have got five mics. It would have felt good to say this is a classic album. But I gave you a classic album 11 years ago with mm. rap music. So if I'm going to come back after 11 years, I had to make a generational statement. Mm. If, if you know me, you've known parts of this album and there's parts you just never known so for me if you're a black man working class man in America somebody who's come up under the last 50 years of the hip hop generation we got 
pain and trauma untalked about, stories of glory untold. We have a view of, and a world perspective that the world desperately needs to see. And I gave it to you on this record. It is, it is one of the absolute best rap, rap albums ever created. You're being very that's, intimate on this album. Like you're opening up. I you, am. You want, you're letting everybody see your soul. I am. The Why? therapy and, and, the, and, the, and the DJ Envy advice, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I got to, you know, shouts out to therapy too. I got to give you and Shanti Dawes credit for that. You know that Absolutely. the silence of shame that when you it, yeah man you get the talking I'm doing something with Shanti today man yeah man shouts mm -hmm. out to Shanti you guys don't know Shanti Dawes a music industry executive she left dealt with some depression and mourning and then came back stronger than ever helping other people deal with their so mm -hmm. support Shanti's organization you know what I mean yeah, I'm aggravating let, them don't let the devil was a great little uh, yeah was a, little yeah. appetizer like yeah. damn yeah man what was that record what was that was, no, was that don't let, run the jewels record or that specific no 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 it's all these records were made for Michael okay. like me and Cuz Lightyear shouts out to Cuz in the building like Cuz put his own career on hold he said I'm gonna pause and we just gonna do Michael I'm just like whoa you know and um, we were determined from day one that people understood that Michael is an origin story to a superhero. Killer Mike's a superhero. Mm. Uh, a a nine-year-old mm. kid made up Killer Mike in his head. Just like, mm. you know, just like Charlemagne the God said, DJ Envy, we project mm -hmm. our strengths. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this nine-year-old kid, mm -hmm. this nine-year-old kid created this superhero character, you know, essentially that became Killer Mike, and he can't lose. He's not going to lose on the track. He's mm -hmm. not going to... And that's part of my... my some people might have scathed over. They didn't notice. But the superhero is is a real human being back there. So Michael got a chance to sit next to Jamie and learn. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And in that learning, take that and say, okay, well, this is going to be the origin story. Run the Jewels is the X-Men. We the Uncanny X-Men. We got different characters coming in. Zach De La Roca, rest in peace. Gangsta Boo, Josh Hyman, you know, 2 chains, big boy. But aside from the X-Men, the Wolverine was Logan before. And I needed people to see that. So, you know, I wanted people to understand that the Run the Jews universe is even bigger and inclusive of Michael. So what, what me and Elle have done and what the discipline has given me has grown me up. So I don't think I could have done this without the last decade mm -hmm. of discipline, of understanding what the hard work takes. And I don't think I could have done it without the love and friendship with Elle because it showed me that who you are is already good enough. Rap-wise, you just got to figure out how to tailor your suit. So, you know, shouts out to Elle and, and the fans. The Let's mm -hmm. keep aggravating them so we can get that RTJ5 movie and um and album. Why, why no ID? Because this album also yeah. feels so Dungeon Family. Yeah, yeah. Rico yeah. Love, CeeLo, Andre 3000. You can throw even well, throw yeah, the characters in and, and Ray Murray. I got to give yeah. Ray Murray a lot of credit. Ray was in the studio with us a lot. And mm -hmm. he wasn't pressing to get beats on there, but just saying he really held a standard. You, you got to stay true to the South. You got you. It got to be as cohesive as the chronic. It got to be as southern as the height of southern Oof. music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I I know we've accomplished that goal and more. Mm -hmm. So you know Ray, I got to give him that. With Dion, no Dion. The thing about executive production is not about you going and saying, "Hey, I got the sound for you." It's about what I, Dion was. It was almost like Luke Skywalker and Yoda. I'm here and I'm expecting him to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And what the process was was him seeing a more disciplined Michael in the studio and showing Michael and Cuz and the team, this is the way you get to who you are. Mm. He taught me how to make a Michael record, mm. how to kill a Mike record. And you learn, mm. your instructor don't just give you anything. He sees where you go and he helps guide you like that. So he's, he really has a seafood-like quality about him. And he's been my friend now in 20 years. Wow. And, and, he's, and, and I've been talking about doing it 20 years and procrastination is the enemy and I'm glad I defeated that enemy. I spent a lot of money. We went through like five mixers on this record. I cared about this record. I ended up spending half a million dollars. I ain't even tell Shay. Mm. Damn. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, just the mixing and mastering? <laughs> no, nah, just in terms of putting that whole album together. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, at some point, I just blicked out. After the quarter million dollars got spent, I just blicked out. I was just like, I got, we got, I got to see it all the this way the through. the first time Shay hearing about this? Nah, I told him. No, I, 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 I got it straight. Yeah, I got it straight. I got it straight. She thought I had like another family in Bolivia or something. She was like, you know what I mean? She was like, on a quarter million dollars this far. She like, you know what I mean? That's, that's a lot of money yeah. it's, it's, for I, this day and age. Especially. Yeah, I didn't buy a demon though, like I wanted to. You know what I mean? But you invested in your career. Yeah, yeah. For people who know the story, I was going to spend a quarter million dollars on a car. And she was like, nah, we're going to buy this. We're going to buy this, mm -hmm. this building. But, you know, I, I, I spent it on the album. And I'm proud. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It, I, it was worth the gamble. Ultimately, you know, I still got I still got to pay that money back to the war chest, right? You know, Andre three thousand stacks. Now, now talk about getting stacks on the project. Scientists right. and engineers, yeah, scientists and engineers, man. We was in Atlanta, and then we realized we hit our ceiling. 
like I'm at home, I'm making a record inspired by home, but I, but I'm I'm too at home. And and then we got to LA. I called Stax when I get out there, no expectations. And I'm like, Stax, like I want you to hear something. And I play it for him, and I just want his opinion. He said, kill hard, man. He say, man, you mind if I call back tomorrow and bring you something? I'm like, do I mind you talking about? You Dre 3000. Mm -hmm. Man, but he he came with two records. One was he was he was singing, it was a beautiful record. He ended up taking that one back because he wants to use it for something. And then he had the scientists and engineers verse, which as a rapper, you look for other rappers to get you excited about rapping. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit of competition. It's a shared, it's a fraternity. It's like DJing. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how big DJ MV is, it's somewhere he gonna see a 15-year-old kid that just got it. Mm -hmm. And he gonna jump on the tables with that kid. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Man, but he I was just like, okay, this it. And I'm listening to it like he mastered pattern. It's crazy. So him and um him and James Blake, I think, produced that part. He reaches out to Future and, and Bear Lowe reaches out to Future. We get Future on it. It becomes, it flowers, it opens up. No ID does that part. So the first half is Jay, I mean, the third is um Dre and James Blake. Then the next one, No ID produces on the Future. You got Future on the No ID beat. And then DJ Paul comes back in mm -hmm. and, and goes under my soul. Man, it just, now at this point, it's just pornography. <laughs> it's just, this, this is just a wet dream of your hip hop fantasies. Damn. It's like, man, it goes crazy. And the next thing you know, we got that and then Aaron, when she put her voice on it, it just, man, it just, it's like, it got hard, like cook crack. It was that. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember at first it was just a super duper dope rap record. And that's what I tell the story of Stacks. So like, man, I think we just got a dope rap record, man. I was just saying, I want, and I sent them with, with Aaron with the, I want to live forever. To me, that, um, that resonated with Dre, in my opinion, because artistically he references feeling like time is running out. He references getting older. Mm -hmm. He references getting his second win when he's 80. Her and what she said that I want to live forever. Artists, how you live forever. You never die. That's right. Basquiat is alive. Warhol mm -hmm. is alive. Right. Henry Osa Watana is alive. Ernie Burns is alive. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I am, art, am an artist. And I think that people never really saw that. They saw I'm a rapper. Oh, you rap good. They saw he's intelligent, but I'm an artist at my core. I'm just a nine-year-old kid, but I just, I'm, I'm a fan and I didn't want to die without having made my mark artistic. Let's go into this record. We're coming right back out. And yeah, it's a perfect example. Let's All get right. right into this record right now. <laughs> Killer Mike is here. His album's out today. It's Michael, and this is Scientists and Engineers, The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Killer Mike, his album is out today. Right now, you can pick it up, Michael. It's a classic. Um, I want to go back to Andre D. Dallas it's a generational statement. Generational statement. Yeah, I love classic that. Classic is damn near cliche right now. but Gen I don't even think this generation knows what classics are yeah. anymore. They, they, they've they've they got a few, they though. They do today. Yeah. I believe they have a few. They've got a few. They I, use that term a lot, or goat. They use both those terms. Yeah, I'm a, a lot. I'd rather eat the goats mm -hmm. if I have them by the throat. I want, I want to go back to Andre 3000. Y'all have such a special relationship. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. my guy. And clearly, you inspire Dre musically. I, I We heard scientists and engineers. Tell me if I'm speaking out of turn. Killer Mike played me a record one time, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, With man. him and Andre. Hey, I'm not even yeah. joking when I this is hey. one of the greatest hey. hip hop records, hey. just musical records I've ever heard hey. in my life. Hey man. And and I'm I mean, talking about it, it's I can't even describe it. It's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> I That's, can't even describe what y'all doing on this yeah. record. And it's like 11 minutes long. <laughs> oh, I thought it was 16. Yeah. <laughs> What's crazy is that's the record he sent me after he took the other man. He was like, well, let's just try this. He sent it and we went. So th there is another Killer Mike and Dre feature. My God. And, and all we got to do is make this album go number one and make the guys over there from the label really, really happy. Mm -hmm. And I'll be right back next year. <laughs> no, this, 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 song be, this song should be a mini movie. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I agree. It's 16 minutes long, right? Am I tripping? It was 11. It's about 11, 11 minutes. So long. you rap for five, Dre rap for five. Yeah, I think he. I think he got. I think no, it's back about twelve minutes. It's seven and five. Seven and five. Yep. Okay. Wow. Who rap? Dre rap longer. Stack. Though. Yeah, stacks rap longer. He always rap longer. Man. When you have some all the girls like you, you get to rap longer. And it's a. It's, <laughs> and, it's a and it's a lady record. Yeah, it's a it's a record that women gonna like and, and players like if you're Crazy. a player you gonna love it too. <laughs> Michael, um, what was more difficult to write, something for junkies or motherless? Something for junkies got wrote because. I got tired of carrying around the burden and the guilt, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I literally remember, man, an addict I used to, you know, you could tell them nervous, I'm fidgeting a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I, let me tell the kids out there something, man, y'all emulating y'all grandparents, y'all don't even know it. Y'all partying, y'all having fun, and y'all, you know, y'all don't understand, boy, around the corner is addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, our mamas was just having fun, mm -hmm. dancing, singing. They used to get dressed up. Your grandparents used to get dressed Absolutely. up. Absolutely. And cocaine was just a frivolous thing, and then, they didn't understand that it was going to clinch into them. You know what I'm saying? And the next thing you know, the same kids that they was just telling to open the door in front of the store, they asking for blow. 
and and we were those kids, people of this age. So you carry around a certain, because you might have been hustling for some joys, prom stuff, but you'll never forget certain faces and certain things. Mm -hmm. And I remember this, it had, she said, Michael, you know, I was an addict. You know, she said, baby, you can't blame yourself. You was a child. You didn't know what, you know what I'm saying? You didn't understand what you was doing. I had a conversation with my mama, mama friends that that really, it, it never left me. She said, you know, you think we shot with you because you Scarface or you <laughs> She's like, I used to sleep with all the guys y'all get your dope from, baby. She said, I shot with you and we shot with you because you treat us like a human being. Mm. And boy, I never, that I, once she showed me my humanity, I never... It didn't mean I absolutely stopped trapping, but I never could shake that. Mm -hmm. So I needed to make something for junkies because I own three barbershops in Atlanta and we're expanding. I own one right on Edgewood Avenue. That's, the, that's historically a black dollar district, Edgewood and Auburn. And, you know, men whose life is defeated, I see in front of my window, young men who trying to figure it out, old men who couldn't get it figured out. So I admit there's, a, there's one guy named Kinfolk who be out there. And Kinfolk, look out for our store. And, you know, mm -hmm. you can tell when he's doing good or bad, but... He has such a good heart, but the addiction, you know what I'm saying? And I needed to make something for that. I needed to make something for that teenage Michael who's an adult right. to say that I just didn't know no better. You know? How, how does that make you feel? Both of you guys, actually, because both of you guys trapped. Like, yeah. you know, to, to know what back during that time, you put the poison in the community because yeah. you didn't well, know. Well, you were a child. You was being right. used. Like I said, yeah, on yeah, Enrich. But now your, your yeah, whole life it. evolved where it's like you're you giving gems to the community. Absolutely. So how does that make you, you know, feel like thinking about back, both of you guys, about that? Well, for, for me, man, it's like a, it's like the Saul to Paul. Like, Saul's a Christian killer and, and became one of the... The, the stewards of the, of, of the Christian faith. And if you have not walked with the devil, a lot of times you can't tell people how to get to the church. So that, even with that being said, that was not the most difficult song to write for me. It was a difficult song. It took me going in my humanity, but this is this is the part about having an executive producer like Dion, who knows you, who's your friend. Mm -hmm. Like He hit me, he said, hey man, I know you, you finished the album, but uh, I think we missing something. Mm. I'm like missing something. What you talking about? We missing something. We got shed tears, something for junkies. We got enriched. We got. He say, man, what, what, what are you really afraid of? And I'm like, I already faced my fears. My girl's gone. I say, my grandma, my my mama did. And he said, what? Well, that's what that's we mm, it's motherless. And I'm right. like, no, we not. <laughs> I'm like, I ain't gonna rap about that. I never even said Denise was dead. I never said to my mama, I say she transitioned, say she went on. I hadn't said any of that to nobody, mm -hmm. not to my children, not to my woman, not to my community. And I, I got in the booth and the, the he, he first he played the beat and I'm just like, I don't even like that. Kid. And he switched up right there. Then I tried to use the man, Ghostface already did mother's child. Nah, you're going to do this record. And I step in front of that microphone and the first thing I say is my mama's dead. Mm. Yeah, never said that before? I never said that. My mama's dead. Uh, my grandmama's dead. To keep it honest, I get depressed and be feeling scared. Oh man, I I never been that transparent. I I had to be uh, strong for my children. I had to be strong for my family. And but just man, your mama died. You're not gonna be strong, even if you didn't have the best relationship with her. You're not gonna be strong. It's gonna it's gonna tear you up. So if if she's still alive, man, call her. Mm -hmm. You know, if y'all got some beef between, you, say say you sorry. Like my grandma would say. You got to give up your right for other folk wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, man, that record, boy, it tear me up to even talk about it because I wish I could, I wish I could call my girl and just pull up and say, you was right, because she told me. She said, my mama wanted you. I was 16 when I had you, and you wasn't no mistake. My mama couldn't have any other children naturally, so I wanted her to have something that was her own. So when it was time for me to marry, I have two fathers. When it was time for you to marry, me to marry your, your other father, she asked to keep you. And all I knew the normalcy was me and my grandparents and my sisters. I had never thought about what does it take for a 16 year old child to give up something mm. that they love. And, and it took me to the story of Solomon in the Bible. My grandmother <clears throat> would take me to church and they told the story of this king named Solomon. Two women was arguing over a baby. Yeah. And Solomon as a, as a wise man advisor said, well, cut the cut baby in half. half and give one half to one. And the mother that said, no, keep the baby. And man, I just... He realized that's who the real mother was. Oh, man, yep. I just think about Denise. And as, as tumultuous as her life could be, as adventurous as she was, she had the foresight to understand my baby going to be better mm. than my mama. And I just... Was that I the, wish I could call to say thank you, man. Was <laughs> that the first time you had dealt with that grief in that moment? Yeah. So you never... You just suppressed it? You just, I just worked. 
I worked. I worked. I was. I said on the RTJ. Just the RTJ. When my mother transitioned to another plane, I was sitting on a plane telling her to hold on and stay strong, but she just couldn't hang. Mm -hmm. Truth feels in two years, I'll probably ne never be the same. Oh man, mm -hmm. and, and I, so I had acknowledged that I mm -hmm. was, but man, I hadn't gotten the booth. Say, man, my mama dead. Damn. Girl, she gone, man. Yeah, I saw know? when uh, Dion Cole was up here, and he, you know, what he said about his his his, his mother transitioning. I thought that really resonated with you. Oh man, I'm telling you, it, it's um, you know, and I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a weak. I'm, you know, fuck out of here. You cry. I'm, no, I'm good right here. I, like I'm a crier. Yeah, I cry. I'm, I cry right before I beat your ass and shoot and do all that. You know what I'm, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, I miss my girl, man. Mm -hmm. If you and if your girl's still around, call you. And and that and that's past. This this album brought me. It, you know, I. I did. I, I wasn't always the best father, mm -hmm. meaning I'm traveling, I'm chasing a dream, and and I, and I didn't sit still. So I'm, I'm better with the younger than I was with the older totally in terms was, yeah. of being there. I wasn't always. I I wasn't always the best helpmate to women that weren't necessarily my wife, but they didn't gave me children. Mm. And that, so my radi I radically changed my relationship with them. You know, the one I used to argue and fuss and fight with the most, she right now on the front row now at the, mm. at the, at the listeners. Like, cause you deserve a place of honor. Like when I see it on, the, on High and Holy, you know, to real is this my honor to pay you homage and extend the same respect to all your baby mamas. If you done yeah. had a baby by a solid dude, I'm gonna give you the same respect that I give his wife. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you his children. So there are lots of me, to me, jewels and lessons in this that I had to learn myself that I'm just that I'm, that I'm giving. Let's get in the motherless. I won't play that. Okay, let's get in the motherless. Let's do this. This, 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 this is all playing as much Killer yeah. Mike music as this possible. This listening let's session go. this morning. Let's this get in the motherless me. right here. It's Killer Mike. His album is out. It's called Michael. Yeah. It's the breakfast club. Good morning. That was motherless. Killer Mike. The album is out right now. Michael. Yeah. Like you're talking about Lil, Lil Dicky. You was talking about yeah. Lil Dicky. I, I, I actually saw him post about the album yesterday. Yeah, I, I yeah. saw I, I, Lil Dicky as a again as a rapper. We're a fraternity, so mm -hmm. you could not like that. You could who hits who that. I'm here for bars. He got bars. He's one of the best rappers that I've heard. Technically freestyle. So I already like him. I respect him. He invited me on the show. I came into the that show. Episode. I yeah, had a yeah, bunch yeah. of fun. He but thought I, you had beef with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because of a tweet. <laughs> we and, and, and just I, we got we got to get some money in Greenwood for real. Like, you got let, let's 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 figure out. You know we'll do it. We'll match seventy five hundred a piece. We'll do fifteen grand for Greenwood. Get you an account or something. But let's do something cool. But. Beyond that, I just love and respect the brother. He, mm -hmm. he, Dave's a great dude, but I sent him the record. That's what I just said. He was talking. I just sent it to him. And he hit me back with, man, just, brrr. he was like, that he complimented the lyrics, the production, the mixing, the attention to detail that he paid on that listen is like me standing in the high museum in front of a, a Henry Osa Walt Tanner or, or a Wally Tanner, just, just standing there and watching. And I just appreciated the time he gave, but man, the compliments he gave his record, I wish he was a reviewer because hmm. I think he took it more seriously mm -hmm. than a lot of reviewers. Mm -hmm. I want to I wanna post it. So as an MC, when another MC hit you like that with, man, who mixed it? But this is, you know, he's talking about, you know, he's he's a white guy, so he he didn't grow up in church, but he's talking about the church, the organ, the soul, mm -hmm. or something. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, this year is resonating, you know, because I knew we get it. Absolutely, we southern, you know what I mean? Absolutely. We get. I knew, I knew you'd get it because mm -hmm. musically, but I didn't know if the wider audience would get it, and it's hitting them. They getting it. Now, why, why, why Fable Dickie? on uh something for junkies? Fable's on something for junkies because. Man, there's something about an honesty in Fabo's music and his dealing with, he's from Bankhead. You know, like you hear yeah. Bankhead, mm -hmm. you hear Tip, Dro, me, Shout It Low Faith. Like if you from there, you know it and he mm -hmm. knows it. You know, a lot of people think he's just rapping geek culture and stuff. Fabo grew up in church. Mm -hmm. He grew up with a church. He yeah. wasn't, it, it wasn't even his family, I believe. It was with a church family, but he went to church with them. You know, you got some families, they, they'll come pick up all the, you know, mm -hmm. in the South, they'll come pick up all the kids in the neighborhood. Take them to these little small Pentecostal churches. You eat, you get a chance to learn music. You And so he has an authentic voice. I was waiting on D'Angelo. I was waiting on D'Angelo to kind of, to, to bless it because I knew he had some soul and perspective and I was thinking sound. And then I walked in Stankonia, shouts out to New Face. New Face is in there and Fabo walks in behind him. And that's when I realized is God is is it, it stays anonymous to serendipity because mm -hmm. I didn't put that together. God Ooh. put that together. And I asked Fabo, I said, I want you to hear something and, and what you think about it, what you could do to it. Next thing I know, Fabo was in the next day doing doing what he did on something for junkies. And it, it to me, it takes the joke out of you looking at him laughing and it adds the soul that he really is. Right. I had, I had my, I, I told you this, I just wish DMX was alive to be on something oh, for Junkie. We man. wanted him for a prayer, man. We was trying to get him. Man. Jonathan Manuel was trying to get him 
to do a to do a prayer on there after I shed tears. Mm -hmm. And God bless the dead, he got out of here on us, man. But X was, X was one of the one. Do you think hip hop is in any trouble? And what I mean by that is, you know, Billboard said there's been no number one hip hop albums, no number one singles all I, year, first time yeah. in thirty years. I'd like to change that. I I like to suggest mm -hmm. that, that would people, be amazing. I'd like for people to push the line on Michael. Um uh, I don't know because I don't I I grew up loving this when charts didn't even validate us. They mm -hmm. didn't even That's acknowledge true. us. Mm -hmm. We didn't get played on MTV if it wouldn't have been for Bob Johnson and BET and shows like Teen Summit with our, our perspective and point of view wouldn't have gotten on. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm used to an era where we not a part of the system anyway. The question for me, though, to the hip hop listener is, are you fulfilled? Mm. After, after you hear what you hear, does it make you confident that I can do it, too? Does it give you a challenge? And I don't mean I can do it, too. Like, that ain't nothing to do. I can do it, too. But no, I can do this. Like, I, the first time I heard KRS-One, mm -hmm. like, oh, man, I, I could do this. First time I heard Ice Cube, Scarface, oh, I could, I, could, I could do this. I think like this. So I don't know if we are in danger because charts and um, big money not acknowledging us. So we haven't been. What I do know is we're in danger if all we have to offer ourselves this year is what we got last year and the year before. Mm -hmm. So I got absolutely. two more questions. Exit yes, 9. Exit 9, man. Um, man, Blast, I just love you. And I, I just, man, I, Blast is, Will sent me Blast's album a couple albums ago, man. I just, and I've been addicted ever since. His team is so cool. We, we've grown a friendship and a kinship. Shouts out to his mom. She's mm -hmm. super cool, man. But man, I, I told him what I, the spirit, Exit 9, um, shouts out to my man Mike uh, from All In Films who called me the Exit Nine Goat, which is hilarious. Exit Nine is the Adamsville exit. That's right. When you get off, when you get off in Adamsville, you get off on Martin Luther King Drive, mm -hmm. and every Martin Luther King Drive is the same everywhere. Mm -hmm. You get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly of my people, and I love. I love that song because it's it's the, my today was a good day, mm -hmm. you know, and it it references toward the end, you know. I say thank the Lord I ain't a junk, I ain't an alcoholic, because I see what the worst of life have done to good men, and you see that on Exit Nine too. But man, it's a lot of good on Exit Nine. It's a lot of cool things. So this is a record that I love. It's a record that I love. The last song on the album, High and Holy. High and Holy, man. That's um. Her Rita Marley say that. Uh -huh. You know, her and Bob get yeah, High and Holy, and I um. I just that never left me, and I remember Shay referenced it too. It just never left me, even when I'm dressed in white today. I wanna, I wanna feel like at one with my ancestors and at mm -hmm. peace. And and a lot of times when when I when I smoke, I don't smoke when I'm in a bad mood. I don't do, but if I'm if I'm communing with my ancestors, I I take a couple mm -hmm. before I meditate and pray, talk to my grandmother, and my mother. It's just it's a perfect closer. This album is a audio experience, but it is a cinematic experience in that. It is best listened to from start to finish. Absolutely, you know what I mean. And um, whichever songs you like more, you'll go back to. Cause just like you pick certain scenes, I watch Goodfellas. I go to the What's So Funny for you know. I go, mm -hmm. but man, when you got fifty four, fifty five minutes, I encourage you to listen front to back, and you're gonna feel like you've read a great novel, like you've seen, like you've seen an amazing movie, like you've had an amazing experience. And even when I come out on tour, I'm headed to tour. We're doing Birmingham, Charlotte, Atlanta. I think first, I'm I'm not coming out just to w walk around side, side to side the stage with the DJ and give you that rap experience that you that you get in love with. Say, Run the Jewels in particular. My goal is to give you a spiritual experience this time around. So we going out with my my choir, the Midnight Revival. We going out with DJ Trackstar. And we gonna we gonna give you an experience. Mm -hmm. That's what this one. album is a generational statement, a spiritual experience. Yeah. The way you bridge the gap from OG Atlanta, like you know, three stacks and CeeLo yeah. with Future and Thug. Yeah. It's yeah. like, oh man, this is a phenomenal project. Thank and you. I would love to see this be the first uh, number one album, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would, hip hop I would, album. I would too. Of the year. I would That's too. Right. Let's do it. Man. So Michael is out today. Go and we get appreciate it. you for joining us, brother. Killer My Mike. love and respect, y'all, man. All right, well, let's get into something for junkies. It's the Breakfast Club. Killer Mike says his album is out today. It's called Michael. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Killer Mike. His album, Michael, Man. is out right now. Make sure you pick it up. Amazing conversation. If you didn't uh, hear the full conversation, you can hit up our breakfastclubonline.com. Go get that masterpiece, Michael, right now, as he calls it a, a generational statement. All right. Now, I guess co-host Roxy Diaz is here, and let's get to the rumors. This is the Rumor Report. Hey, I am Roxy Diaz. What, 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 what you want to know? Just to bring the realness and the truth to the story. Listen up, listen up. On The Breakfast Club. Talk, talk to me. All right. I want to start with this one because this was one of the ones that uh, I saw right when I was walking in here. Suki Hana, she accepts YK Osiris' apology. 
And it's 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 uh, very big of her. But mm-hmm. I'm going to just read a little bit of an insert of what she posted today. She says, first of all, I acknowledge that YK Osiris has apologized to me both privately and publicly. And I have chosen to accept his apology. God always forgives me and I can always forgive others. My accepting his apology is not me accusing or lessening the severity of his actions. He's young. It is my prayer that this experience will cause him and others to be more mindful and respect personal boundaries and uh yeah she she goes on but you know why but suki's mom she still wasn't having it so i'm wondering Mm. if this apology is enough for her as well i want to go on to say that she also said i am pro black women and i am not into tearing down black men also this is something i am choosing to forgive him i love him and i accept his apology i would like to move on from this I love it yeah we should normalize uh, apologies and forgiveness I agree <laughs> yeah no I love we should, it we should normalize people making mistakes learning from those mistakes apologizing being forgiven and move, moving on because you don't know what what their conversation was about you don't know exactly. what, they, what you know what they spoke about but I love the fact that she was you know that she she forgave him and hopefully they can move on and he can put himself in a better space and, and never do yeah. anything and I, like that again and I promise y'all it will be your turn at, at some point in life you're going to do something that you're going to want to be uh, forgiven, for. forgiven for 1000% 1000% mm-hmm. I think it is very 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 big of her it's showing you know those type of things that can happen invading a woman's personal space is just nothing that you ever want to play with and even though we're in an over sexualized market right now it's just like know your boundaries mm-hmm. but it's very big of her to um, to accept his apology yep. so we move on for that uh, Lamar Odom is in the news. He's suing his former manager slash ex. Uh, he's filed a $1 million lawsuit against his former manager. And it's because she faked his signature to sell his Brooklyn home, which his family has owned for nearly 30 years. Mm. Now, the family member who still lives in the home are now facing eviction due to the unauthorized sale It's been a whole mess. He claims that his former manager illegally used his name, social security number, email address, and other things. She's accused of defrauding people. Basically, he was getting appearances and doing them, and Mm -hmm. he wasn't getting the money for it. He also claims that she still owes him money. It's just really, really messy between Lamar and Tanita. So, yeah. Well, if she forged the signature and and he has proof, that'll be an easy win. That is, but here's my thing. Um, If you have once signed a power of attorney to somebody, doesn't that hold in court no matter if you, what yeah a power of attorney yeah absolutely but what you know when you're in a relationship sometimes you know sometimes with your spouse or your girlfriend or your or your husband or your boyfriend you'd be like just sign that for me and you don't even yeah. think about anything about it it's just not power of attorney you just your, your, your wife or your girl or your husband sign for you you know you got to read everything that Correct. you're putting your name on i mean not just in this situation in relationships but that's like how a lot of people in the industry get messed up with former managers accountants and everything like that because you're giving them a power of attorney but you're not really paying attention what you're giving them a power of attorney for and the next thing you know your taxes aren't paid damn yeah. yeah, you know, for, it, personal. Yeah, it happens yeah, to a lot of people. Definitely. No, I, it's definitely happened to a lot of friends of mine that I know. But yeah, Damn. you yeah. know, even even early on with, with with me and my wife being married, you know, my wife would pay the bills and she would pay the bills for my business account and she would sign my name back then. And I remember going to the bank to cash a check, and they was like, "This this signature doesn't match." <laughs> Your signature and I'm like, "This is my signature." They was like, "No, this doesn't match all the other signatures." First of all, can't nobody match my signature. I sign, I write like a slave. Okay, Jesus. like I write crazy. Jesus, I don't. You can't even read mine. Y'all, y'all got good signatures? Yeah. Horrible I, I, signatures. My signature is like scribble scratch. No, like, mine is and I think Who mine is like totally different every single time that I that I even try. This how, this I definitely want to see this signature. I forgot, I forgot how to do cursive years ago. Yeah. I forgot how to do cursive. So I do the first name. That's my signature. Dude, that's how I do mine. I do mine the same way. Mine is like really, really, really similar to that too. I don't know why they accept any of these. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, like, look, no. like, look how that looks. Dude, that's how mine Come is. On, no, man. the worst is when you go to like get sign your credit cards and there's little electronic things and mm. they ask you to sign and all you're doing is <laughs> scribble scratch. Yep. There's no such thing as a same. Penmanship nope. went away with text messages. Absolutely. In my we we got to do better by our ancestors. We need yeah. better signatures. <laughs> Definitely mm. too. All right. HBO is clarifying rumors about the second season of The Idol. It's been in the news a lot. People either like the show or they don't like the show, but they were already canceling it before we could even talk about it. They only have two episodes out right now of The Weeknd's Idol. But anyway, uh, they are clarifying that they have been misreported and that the decision on season two of Idol has not been determined yet. But um, I've heard reports that a lot of people don't want the show to come back because uh, they didn't really care to work with Abel a lot. 
Oh, he's difficult to work with? That's what they said, but you know, teach his own. You never know. I think that when you have a lot of pressure and that's like a show that you're creating and Mm -hmm. you're executive producing, you just have so much pressure that some things can come off the wrong way. And it's more so somebody wants their passion project to succeed. It's not so much, you know, that they're trying to be difficult to work Mm. with. But I wasn't on the set, so I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. And uh, last but not least, uh, sending condolences to Ray Lewis, the Baltimore Ravens legend, uh, pro football Hall of Famer Ray Lewis. His son, uh, Ray Lewis III, has passed away. Um, I'm definitely a believer that you should never have to bury your children. And um, it's a very, very unfortunate story. Um, He posted to his Instagram. He really can't believe that he's even typing. This is his uh, younger younger son is posting really can't believe that i'm typing this but uh rest in peace big brother rashawn lewis a true angel i pray you're at peace now because i know how much you was really hurting i love you i love you i love you uh he was only 28 years old so damn. condolences to ray lewis super damn, sad damn, story damn. Yeah, yeah definitely sending that family healing energy lord have mercy they yeah. say the cause they didn't say the cause um and i don't want to speculate mm. but reading that instagram post is like mm. Mm. yeah all right, well, that is your rumor report. Charlemagne, who are you giving that down to? Man, four after the hour, man. I got to give Donkey of the Day to uh, Mark DeCara in the Lake County Sheriff's Office. We need justice uh, for Mark, and we need to take a stand against this because we could be next. All right, we'll get into we'll that next. It. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I was born a donkey. It's the Donkey of the Day. Charlemagne the devil? Possibly. <laughs> the Breakfast Club. Yes. Donkey today for Friday, July 16th, Tupac's born day. Sidebar, uh, Tupac got to be the ultimate Gemini, right? Like the whole dual personality thing. Like nobody symbolizes symbolizes that more than Pac did. But anyway, Donkey of the day. Uh, today goes to a 62-year-old man named Mark DeCara and the Lake County Sheriff's Office in Illinois. All of y'all are getting Donkey of the day because all of y'all are the reason Mark is in jail. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Mark is in jail, and I will say unjustly, even though he shot somebody. Yes, Mark DeCara shot someone, and the police did their job and arrested someone for shooting Mark, but I don't agree with the arrest, okay? There is always a valid reason to shoot somebody, all right? Somebody breaks into your house, let that hammer fly, okay? Woman being attacked by uh, a man overpowering them, let that hammer fly. I'm all, I am all for the right to bear arms and defending yourself with said arms, and that's what Mark did, kind of. But he still shouldn't be in jail. Let's go to uh, WG for the report, please. WG9. We're here at 5 o'clock, a man is facing felony charges after Lake County Sheriff's deputies say he shot himself while he was asleep. Police were called to 62-year-old Mark DeCara's home in Lake Barrington last April and found him with a gunshot wound to the leg. He told officers that he dreamed someone was trying to break into his house <gasps> and he got his 357 Magnum and okay. shot himself in the leg. That's when he woke up. Police then found that DeCara had a revoked FOID card, but still had the gun. He's now facing felony charges for possessing a firearm without a valid FOID card and reckless discharge of that firearm. He's out on $150,000 bond. Jesus. Now, I think what Mark did is extremely stupid, but not criminal. Okay, he had a dream that someone was breaking into his home. In his dream, he retrieved his 357 and shot who he believed was an intruder, but the intruder was himself. Uh, I've never had a dream this intense in my life, okay? My dreams while I'm asleep uh, don't seep into my reality unless it's the dream I'm peeing on the toilet. We've all had that one, right? Right? Yes. That dream historically has caused me to wet the bed. All right. When I hear these kinds of stories like Mark's, I initially don't believe them because I'm like, this is a lot of activity to sleep through. OK, I'm also the type that when a dream gets too intense, you know, like dreaming about someone breaking in your house, I'm waking up as soon as the breaking happens. OK, that's actually one of the most comforting feelings ever when you're in a terrible dream and you wake up and realize it's just a dream. OK, very hard for me to believe someone can get up while still sleeping, grab their gun and get to shooting. But I'm not here to judge Mark because I don't judge any of you women who wake up from dreams. Your man cheated on you and you be mad at him because you decided to eat cheese before bed, knowing cheese causes bad dreams. Now, what Mark goes through in his sleep is out of the realm of my understanding. But I have a question. Hmm? Lake County Sheriff's Office, why did you arrest Mark? The charge is because he had a revoked FOID card, yet still possessed a firearm. A FOID card is a firearm uh, owner's identification card. Marks was revoked, and so he got charged with possession of a firearm without a valid card and reckless discharge of a firearm. Now, I think what Mark did was stupid, but not criminal. 
Okay, he deserves donkey of the day, not a warrant for his arrest. You're going to charge me for discharging a firearm and the person I shot was myself? My God, Lake County Sheriff's Office. If I put a gun in my mouth and try to blow my brains out, but I live, do you charge me with attempted murder? Huh? If your woman is sleeping next to you and she starts hitting you in your sleep while she's still sleeping because she's, have, she's having a dream, she ran into that woman she thinks she's sleeping with, uh, should she be charged with assault? Huh? We don't know what kind of trauma this man Mark DeCarrie is going through, what type of PTSD he may be dealing with. Maybe he's been the victim of a home invasion before. Who knows? I just know this isn't something to be arrested over, okay? His Floyd card was revoked. Can you not have some sympathy for his stupid ass? Can he just get a fine or something? For all we know, this man might have been defending himself against Freddy Krueger. Okay, there was no one breaking into his house, but what if there was a man in a red and green striped polo sweater, a fedora, and knives on his fingers breaking into his dreams? Does a man need to go to jail for defending himself against that? Well, if that's the case, go lock up all of Elm Street. All right, put cases on Nancy and all those folks for defending themselves against Freddy Krueger. Come on, Lake County Sheriff's Office. Have some damn empathy, all right? This man cheddar bobbed himself while dreaming, and he ends up in handcuffs. We have to take a stand against this because first it's, first it's going to be Mark getting arrested for shooting himself in a dream. Next, it's going to be you getting arrested for peeing on yourself in a dream. Yes, you. Okay, dreaming that you peeing, wet in the bed, peeing on yourself, maybe peeing on someone in the bed with you. Next thing you know, you're charged with simple battery. Did you know intentionally peeing on someone without their consent, you could be charged with simple battery, which is a misdemeanor? Based off the Lake County Sheriff's Office logic, if you pee on yourself while dreaming, you get a charge. Do you want this to be a case? Huh? Do you want this to be the case? Well, stand with Mark. All right, but in the meantime, please give Mark the care in the Lake County Sheriff's Office the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you mm. are the donkey mm. of the day. You are the donkey of the day. Yee-haw. We're really approaching sci-fi levels of life, people. Mm. When you're getting arrested for what you do in dreams. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's whack. I right. shoot myself and then you arrest me? Mm hmm. Nah. What's wrong? You thinking about something you did in a dream? <laughs> okay. Mm -mm. okay. All right. Well, I have so many questions. Ask him. I, no, I just, I'm just wondering how he reached for his gun while he was asleep. That's in his what dream. I want Like, know. I'm just like, what was that dream? And how did you reach for your gun while you was asleep and shoot yourself while you was asleep? He probably had it on the side of his bed. And clearly, but so how do you reach for your, your sleeping? You never, like, you never got up or swung in the middle of a dream? Not, Not that, that I remember. Call. No, no. I've definitely woken up screaming I've or crying woke up screaming. or falling out of the bed, but I've never like swung or because in your dream you feel so restricted. Like yeah. you're really restricted in your sleep. Nah, so I, yeah. sw I swung on Gia one time in my dream sleeping. Like I, I had a dream like I was fighting and I'm fighting and she grabs me to try to wake me up and I swung. Yeah, absolutely. You didn't make her orgasm for ten years, but you don't want to swing. She should have been. <laughs> She should have been the one. She should have been having them drinking. My God, this guy is crazy. Jeez. Jesus Christ. All right, BET, we'll see you guys on Monday. All right? oh my God. Be, the matter of fact, Tuesday, because Monday's a holiday. Juneteenth, Father's Man. Day weekend. I'm going to be in Houston for you my car have been show. been frustrated. So myself. shout out right. to uh, everybody out in Houston. I'm going to see y'all this weekend for my car show this weekend, Father's Day weekend. Monday, we're off. Man. So BET, we'll see you on Tuesday. Roxy, say goodbye to BET. Bye, BZ. She did that already. A long time ago. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's, it's freaky, freaky, freaky Friday. Now we have a choice, Roxy. We're gonna let you decide. Oh God. Rock, by the way, Roxy already decided. No, I did not. No. What are the options? <laughs> no, 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 no. What are the options? All right. These are the two freaky, freaky, freaky Friday questions. Oh, right. I, one I came know. from uh, Lyrica Anderson. I believe that's her name, and she was talking about when is it okay to have sex with somebody? Like, how long do you have to wait before people consider you a hoe? Oh, I thought y'all doing have sex? DD. I thought y'all doing. Or, Oh, okay. Or let's talk about <laughs> stinky coochie. DDG said uh, he likes stinky coochie. He that he's into that sweaty, sexy, nasty, smelly, like stinky coochie. Clearly, Charlemagne has already decided which one we're talking about. No, 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 about. no. I'm saying I don't like I don't like him saying that because is, are him and Holly still together. You know, Holly's my cousin. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, because that's what people are gonna assume. They're gonna assume. Oh, you know what I mean. You're taking this little mermaid thing too far. Now you like a little fishy smell? I don't like that. <laughs> Shut up, man. So where you want to go, Roxy? Well, it's, that's your, we're not going to go there if that's, oh, the, it's no, really your cousin. Like, the, like I'm just, I got so many questions. First of all, there's nothing good about 
stinky coochie. Like, that's just not a good... And there's too many Instagram advertisements about BV gels <laughs> now that that should not be a problem right. with anybody's like coochie right now. Let's, like do, let's do stinky coochie. Like All right. 800-585-1051. Do you like nasty, smelly, stinky sex? Now, that could be coming from the gym. Because coming from the gym, you could just have that's your workout different. and you're going to have a little body odor and then you could get it in with your partner. But that's cool. I like I like me a little Box might be a little sour. You know man me? smell. No, I'm not talking about a, a woman's a woman's situation should never be questionable. But a man, if you got like that man smell, like that, you know, you just after got the out gym of, smell, not like you, you. Listen, I'm not. I'm definitely listen. We'll talk about it when we That's get when they fall because they lick my balls right after I play ball. <laughs> Cameron, Cameron, God bless you, Cameron. DJ Clue, Fantastic Four. That's when they fall because they lick my balls right after I play ball. <laughs> Okay. 800 585 1051. Let's discuss. Let's talk about it. Do you like stinky, smelly, oh nasty sex? It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's Freaky Friday, goddamn. The Breakfast Club. Freaky Friday. It's Freaky Friday. It's Freaky. Call in now. 800 585 1051. Hey, look, where are my presets? We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's, it's freaky, 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 freaky Friday. And the freaky, freaky, freaky Friday question, uh, which is picked by our co-host, Roxy Diaz. No, come, Charla picked it. Come he up. said he was very passionate about this. <laughs> passionate about this topic. It comes from uh, DDG, who says he likes stinky sex. Hot, sweaty, muggy, stinky, wet, booty, ass, breath, naked, stinky, moist, steamy sex. Well, Roxy just informed me that DDG is no longer with my cousin Holly anymore. Mm -hmm. So being that he's not with the Little Mermaid anymore, he has to find some fishy box somewhere. Mm -hmm. So this is what this is all about, I believe. All right. So mm -hmm. uh, let, let's start with you, Roxy. You said you, you're not, uh, you and Charlamagne are, are not mad at a little man odor. I'm not mad a little. Like, if you smell like a man, a man is supposed to smell like a man. Like, that's that's just... I'm not mad at that. I offend myself I'm, sometimes when I like I can smell my like if I go to I'm the gym I can about, smell myself. And I'm, not I'm like about I feel, hardcore bo. You're just offensive. I'm talking about like you might have been working outside for a little bit. You a little got a little sweat on you. You know it's okay. It's tolerable. Might have been barbecue and you smell like a little smoky chicken and then you also nah. smell like you know you still got your first of all after the club smell is cool after the club you. Definitely, yeah. After yeah, the club, after the club first of all, you're too cool. drunk after the club That's to even realize what anything smells like. You smell like alcohol, the and drugs cigarettes. you might have been inhaling, cigarettes and everything, and black yeah. and miles of weed. Exactly. My so. father always told me if it smells like cologne, leave it alone. If it smells like fish, eat all you wish. I, oh God! Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think I, mi I misinterpreted that wrong when I was younger. As I get older, I think he was. I think he might have been telling me make sure it's not a man. To be honest, <laughs> uh, obviously. Now that I get, as I get older, obviously. I, think, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's pretty clear now I don't I didn't realize that until I got older <laughs> I really thought he was telling me some some very keen wisdom back then now I'm like oh but here's the thing though you both mm -hmm. have you gone to the crab shack unknowingly crab and shack. continuously <laughs> went in and ate all you could eat the all you could eat buffet are Eat. you saying if it smelled like the, uh, the kitchen at Red Lobster, have we continued? <laughs> have we continued to have go? Have we continued to do what we have do? Have you continued to go? Honest. Do you smell uh, it? Yes, but then I've also told people to go take a shower. Okay. But you say it in a way like, let's go take a shower together. But you still, before a shower, you've had sex oh, no, without no, having the, the before, yeah, No, didn't do nothing until after we took the so shower. So you've never been with a, with a woman... That, oh, no, I have. I've definitely been with a woman. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You've never, you did stop it. But I will say this. Uh, I'm stinky. Right, I'm a stinky person. Like I sweat. If 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 I walk to my car, he likes to follow Santa. Charlamagne knows I'm a stinky person. He's been with me, no, but when no it comes idea. to it, <laughs> but, that's your stinky person. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, what your ass smells like, so you wouldn't want nobody in your ass. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like that, I'll be honest. Like I, I, I know how I am, so I'm I'm when a stinky that ass person. Clean, somebody can get in it. <laughs> not somebody like, like, not, but I am that person like I know I'm not a great white boy so I know that you not a man, you too grown for that man what you're crazy yo you got skin you marks go on your drawers I didn't say I got skin marks on you my drawers you are not a clean wiper that's Bruh. what that means let's that go, means you 40 you... plus years old and don't know how to wipe your ass yet let's go to the phone that's lines. terrible should be ashamed Dax, Dax good morning <laughs> My God. Hey, how you doing, Breakfast Club? TMI up here with y'all. Dax, good morning. Uh, hello, who's this? Hi, this is Sandra. 
Hey, uh, good morning. Uh, do you agree with DDG? Well, I've heard that before from a partner. I think it's a lot more common than what y'all think. Um, I think men think of it as like a little seasoning on it. Not that it stinks, but they don't want it fresh out the shower. They want it to have been marinated a little bit. I think that man was just trying to tell you something. Uh, he was just trying to make you feel better about your situation. No! <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's this from really a partner before. They don't want it just fresh out the shower. They want it to have, like, if you maybe just did a run or y'all was out all day, they just want it to kind of sit for a minute. Like a spontaneous get-up situation where it's just like, let's get it. You don't have time for a shower or anything, right? Well, in a sense of that, but actually the, the actual, you know, scent of it. They want it to have, like, a little seasoning, quote-unquote. I've heard that directly. Like, that's what they prefer. So, so men have told you that they, they like your box and smells like a little seasoning on it. <laughs> yes, like I, I don't know if that's a compliment, shower. Mama. So, so you like no, don't take a shower. No, don't take a shower. So you've been out here purposely like making your your poom poom smell pungent. She might have. She might men. just eat pineapples and mango all day. You never know. She might be eating <laughs> pineapples and mangoes and all types of fruits and juices, and and it may be right. You never know. Mm. Yes, I'm very fresh, but they don't prefer it like that. It's very, it's not as uncommon as y'all might think. I do believe that what you put into your body and the things that you eat, it's kind of like when you have asparagus and you pee, you smell mm-hmm. like asparagus. I think that like if you have a great healthy diet, you may let off a natural odor that's already appeasing. That then it's just like a natural. Roxy odor. brings up a good point. I you think know? it's a difference between an odor and a or something that's funky that smells. Yeah. Everything has a natural odor to it, but some correct that stink means that there's a problem, right? Because they say if you could smell seafood, then it then you're not supposed to eat it because really? seafood is not supposed to smell like shrimp, crab, fish, all of that is not supposed to smell. So if you ever have a seafood dish, you know, like and it's fresh, you never think about it. You never really smell it if you're getting. That's not true. You smell seafood right out the ocean. Well, it smells like the ocean. Right? Yeah. It has a fresh, it's fresh. It's not like. Nah, because yeah, when you go to an island and they pull that stuff out, you, it smells like. <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> you go down on a woman and be like, it smells fresh. <laughs> <laughs> what? 800 585 1051. If you just joined Freshly us, caught. we're talking about DDG and DDG saying that, you know, hey, he likes. He likes Sweaty, his woman to smell like nasty, a little mermaid. Moist, wet sex. That's yeah. the question. Like the little mermaid. Let's talk about it. Do you feel the same? It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's Freaky Friday. Hey, look, where are my freaks at? Call in now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, 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 freaky Friday. It's actually Stinky, Freaky, Freaky, mm-hmm. Freaky Friday. And this comes from DDG. Uh, he left, uh, I guess, a post on Twitter or Instagram and said that, you know, he likes stinky sex. He said, hot, sweaty, muggy, stinky, wet, booty, ass, breath, naked, sticky, moist, steamy sex. He'd have really broke the internet if he would have just tweeted, I like my women's vagina to smell like the Little Mermaid. That would have killed. <laughs> Jesus. So we're asking you, what's your thoughts? Hello, who's this? This is the Tino from Columbus, South Carolina. 803. What's up, brother? Talk Metro. To us. What's your thought on stinky sex? Man, you know, I give you, I give you like two chances, man. It's causing if I like you, right? It's causing if I meet you. If I, if, if I meet you out, man, if I meet you out one night in the club or something, you go home with me, you got a little tang to that thing, you know, I might give you another chance, but if... If I come around, if you come around again yeah, with the same, you know, look, man, I can't, I can't mess with you no more. You know what I mean? I tell you one thing: if you go home with a woman and she got on them little leggings, them tights, you gonna smell something. We call those wolf pants. Wait, what? Them, them leggings and them wolf tights. Pants. Them leggings and them tights. They really, really hold in the odor. So when the woman goes home at the end of the night and takes them off, the smell just go woof. That's why we call them wolf pants. I'm telling you. You shouldn't be dating Yo. anybody that got wolf pants Come on. If they take off their it. pants. That's, that's, and that's majority women well, wear like leggings spanks? and tights. Leggings, tights, yes. Spanks. Roxy? Skims? I've never heard of that. So it's not sorry. every woman? Listen, I don't know if women can smell themselves. <laughs> but when y'all yes, go home, you, look, a woman, like, let's be very, very clear. A woman can definitely smell herself. Just next time you've been out all day and you got on them leggings and them tights, them wolf pants, the, what do you call them, Roxy Skims? Spanks. Yeah, shout out to Kim. Next time you wear them ladies... Take them off. Just pull them off real fast. Are you supposed to be watching? <laughs> Why? Why? Jesus Christ. Why? I cannot. Hello, Watch. who's this? Hi, it's Lily. I'm in California. Hey, Lily. 
right. You be stinky so, sometimes? First off, I was going to say, <laughs> um, same sex is not appealing. For me personally, it's not appealing at all. Like, after the gym, all that, it makes me feel like the Grinch thinks thanks stunk. Um, but what I think BDG was referring to when he was saying, quote, unquote, stank coochie is, like, he's talking about, like, the natural pheromones and the smell that a coochie gives off. It's not necessarily, like, stinky, but it's, like, it's not roses and vanilla bean perfume for me. True. Well, you shouldn't. That's why I say you can't refer to natural odors as stink. But right. what boxes are, you, are, are people exactly, dealing with? Exactly. But, you know, young men, and people do that. Like, it's. I don't know. Everybody has their own natural odor. odor. But it's not a, a Yours stink. just happens to stink. No, you said you're a stinky oh, me? person. Yeah, I'm, so a you're sweaty. A I'm a sweaty stink. stinker. I know that. So, yeah, everybody has oh, their wow. own natural said, oh, wow. scent. <laughs> no, I sweat. I sweat. Like, I'm He's not even going to say, like, I sweat. trying to get an Old Spice commercial out <laughs> of here. Word. Right. Word. Don't come for Dion's job <laughs> right now. Sweat, like, you know, like. Just because you sweat don't make you stink. No, I stink. Every time you sweat. stinks. Like, when at night. Something I like I, was, I wake up and I'm like in a puddle. Something Are you like wrong. in menopause? No, in menopause. Oh no, I do that. I, I do that. My wife even bought the uh, sweat absorbent sheets. Yeah, I got I got those too now. That yeah. don't make you stink. Well, I, I, right. I, I, I wash my like I have to take a shower every morning before I go to work. I do, and that I take anyway. a shower every night. I do that. Anyway. Some people would take a shower at night and then leave in the morning. I no, can't. I don't do that. I can't. Mm-mm. That might be the beginning of menopause for you. For I've been real. doing this for a long time. This is my whole life. Well, I know your pillows look crazy then with all that beijing that comes off your bed and <laughs> off your head. On, I know that looks What's crazy. the moral of the story, man? I hate you. Let Roxy do the moral of the story. What's the moral of the story, Roxy? Smell good. Don't eat asparagus before sex. Don't there eat you asparagus before sex. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. Jesus. All right. All right. When we come back, we have Pass the Aux. Nyla will be joining us. She puts us on to some music that we should be listening to. And we'll get to Pass the Aux next. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Do you smell it? That smell. The kind of smelly smell. The smelly smell that smells smelly. The Breakfast Club. Hey everybody, it's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Roxy Diaz, here. And it's time for Pass the Ox. Nyla's here. Big Nyla. Go, go, go. For past the ox with DJ Nyla. Yup, Nyla, 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 Nyla. Yeah, DJ, come spin that, come spin. Okay, so boom, for past the ox today, first I wanted to shout out. It's Tupac's birthday. I love Tupac. The Dear Mama documentary is super fire. But he's not on my list for the, the three. First, I want to I did start a Pac with... mix, though, so don't worry about it. I did a Pac mix. You did? Doing Pac mix this morning. I love that. Okay, perfect. So, boom. Doja Cat is finally back, and mm-hmm. she ate. Like, she did what needed to be done. She delivered with a new single called Attention, and she gave us a music video. The video was fire. Now, listening to the record, I was a little like, mm, I don't know where she's going with this, because the beginning of it, she's, like, singing, and it sounds mm-hmm. really enchanted. But when you get to the Bars, it's like, ah, uh, okay, so she's spitting. Okay. She's spitting. Let's get into it. Look at me, look at me. That's phenomenal. I love it. Huh? I love she's it. I, I like that. I love it. Yeah. That's phenomenal. She's been giving me, uh, what's the young lady from Diggable Planets? What's her name? Mm. Oh, I can't remember her name right now. She's giving me that energy. A little bit. That's yep. all. I love it's it. It's tough. And it's, it's cool because she's addressing like all the rumors that were like talked about on her online. How people were saying she's ugly. Why'd you go bald? Why this? Why that? But in the video, she's like owning it. Like, you know, yeah, my bald head matched my... It's, okay, we it's, heard that part. Yeah, 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 it's tough. Didn't she say she was doing an all-rap album this time? Yes. I'm, I'm here for that. Mm-hmm. Ladybug, that's her name from Diggable Planet. Ladybug, Ladybug that's her, yeah. yeah. Ladybug, yeah. Yeah, so super dope. Shout out to Doja. We're super glad you're back. And I think just like out of the class, like people were saying like Princess of Rap, like that debate was going on mm-hmm. earlier this year. And I think people forgot about Doja just because she hasn't been present. But it's like... Doja is highly talented. Yo, Doja's she top is tier. Nah, not only busy. is she a great songwriter, she can sing, she can rap. Like, she's, she's, she's awesome. that girl. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. Yes. Flowers to Doja this morning. Next, I'm going to take it to the UK with Dave and Central C. This is actually a huge project. It's a huge project over in the UK, but it's actually really big here. And I think, like, the youth them is really big on UK rap, but I think this is good enough for you guys to like, too. So this joint is called Sprinter. Okay. UK. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like it. Demand them two inconsiderate five star hotel smoke a cigarette. <laughs> what? I love I love the UK accent. Yeah. I, 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 I love say, it. Like you just blew me. <laughs> <laughs> they can say anything. Early. They can say anything and it sounds good. Right? I love it. Sounds great. Nah, they're tough. Um and You're from the UK and you say you're smoking a cigarette. What are you actually smoking though? A cig. Oh, okay. Just asking. 
Is that the right answer, no, really? It's not. Google it. <laughs> okay. I feel like they do smoke a lot of cigarettes, though, in the UK. Like, I think they actually. It's a term for it. He's trying to play with y'all. No, I'm not. There we go. See, here question. I go. No, didn't they start <laughs> over there? I'm asking the simple question. I feel question. like it. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay out of that one. Okay. I'm not cool enough. <laughs> Is this like That's the right, insider? Roxy. Roxy, you work for Good Morning America. You stay out of this. That's one. right. I'm going to stay out of this. I'm only here as a guest. You know, bring Claudia and Jess back. I'm only here as a guest. I'm going back to Good Morning America. <laughs> All right. I cannot. I, I was gonna say I didn't I wasn't gonna say that yes you're Come so stupid on. oh my gosh <laughs> what <laughs> language is different everywhere it, it is that's what that language is, is that's what it is called everywhere. in in the UK it is it, it is, is called it is. that they have a different all right I'm moving on to the next one <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we had Flajene on my Amazon Music Twitch show Flajene oh, she was Wednesday. just like a morning America with she's us. dope she's, she's love I love her yeah. she's stu- super dope. And she's like smart. She yeah. Articulates herself mm-hmm. well. I like her. She's passionate. Yes. But um, she put me on to this artist named Baby Drill out of Atlanta. It wasn't hip, but he just dropped the project and he had this song called Slightly Dub featuring 21 Savage and Young Nudie. Tough. So let's get into it. I think I think I had to, I had to hear the dirty version for this yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't, I can't, I, I can't get jiggy with the clean ever, version. Yeah. I can't get jiggy with the clean version. Yeah. True, okay. Fair enough. That, man? that happened last week. Put Doja Cat back on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, do- that Doja was hard. Put that, that Doja, Doja back hard. on. The Doja is tough. Okay. Put that Doja back but on. But definitely tap into the baby drill. You know radio's hard. There's no clean you can't, Yeah, You can't listen to, to, to drill music clean. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah at you all. You really can't. At all. Yeah. Which Sadly. goes to say that the artist, you brought this up before, Charlamagne, it's so important to have those radio cuts so that yes. you could actually have You're play the- and stuff like that. And I don't right. think, I think we've gotten so much into the SoundCloud, Spotify's and, you know, Apple Music's of it all. And we forget that there's still a mass listening audience that listens in their car and listen mm-hmm. with their family you want to you want to be able to tap into all of that so that they should be right. making yeah. making radio music too because that's not even a radio frequency yeah you can't no. even I hear that record I'm like I don't want to hear that right now <laughs> I'll listen to that maybe later in the car you mm-hmm. know what I mean alright mm-hmm. fair enough well to those listening please send me clean virgins that would be very helpful you <laughs> there know, you go you want... did you edit that one yourself no because that sounded like it took a lot of time whoever had to do that one sorry Taylor Jesus. <laughs> but you, you did you did good Jesus. <laughs> all right. Well, that was past the aux. Now, how can people uh, reach out and touch you and follow you and all that good stuff? Yes, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at Nyla Simone, N-Y-L-A-S-Y-M-O-N-E-E-E. And if you guys are in New York City this weekend, I'll be DJing at Central Park. We're doing like a huge Juneteenth concert. Grandmaster Flash, me, Static Selector, Spin King, Diamond Cuts, uh, DJ Premier. Okay, Capri. Capri. Kate Capri, yeah, bunch Capri. of legends in the building. Mm. It's going to be a vibe. Get to it, Nyla. Get to Love it. it. All right. Now, when we come back, of course, today is Tupac's birthday, so we're going to get a Tupac mix mm-hmm. and let me know your favorite mm-hmm. Pac joint. And don't forget this weekend, of course, Father's Day weekend, Juneteenth weekend. Hopefully, you guys will come hang out with my family out in Houston for my car show. You can get your tickets at Eventbrite. We're talking old school cars, new school cars, cars from uh, 50, Trader Truth, Young Dolph's cars, uh, Bun B, and a host of others. Can't wait to see you guys. Let's get to the mix. Let's go. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. At special sneak previews across the country, audiences are discovering The Flash. Don't miss your chance to see why people are calling it absolutely sensational. My film of the year, Believe the Hype. Don't miss The Flash, now playing only in theaters, rated PG-13. Hey, everybody, it's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our guest co-host, Roxy Diaz, here. Hello. Now, Roxy, you got something to shout out to talk about? I do, I do. I want to shout out, uh, first of all, my ABC family is putting on an amazing special on June 19th, Juneteenth. Uh, we have Soul of a Nation, 50 Years of Hip Hop Celebration, executive produced by none other than Angie Martinez. Angie Ball. It's been an amazing ride. It's a great collaboration talking about mental mental health, uh, financial uh, literacy. We're also talking about women empowerment and social justice in the hip hop world. Got a lot of amazing people that are showing up on this special. Master P, uh, Style P, Charlamagne the God, of course, yep. is on there too. Lola Brooks was there. Who else am I missing, Charlotte? Uh, Coyle Ray is on there. Uh, the Locks, yeah, Fat, Fat Joe. Joe. Um, and you had a lot of people on there. Yeah. I can't remember myself Roxy, included. Yep. Yeah. Um. So I just want to show them a lot of love, and and it was a really great conversation. I think a lot of more conversations in respect to hip hop have to be made, and it's a great year for hip hop right now, celebrating their fiftieth. So, so yeah, definitely tune into that. Um, this coming Monday, it's gonna be absolutely amazing, and everybody, the community. I will say this about the hip hop community: those 
that have watched me during my 106 and Park days into my growth right now. That's the audience that's following me into Good Morning America, and I appreciate all the love and the support and. And that's and all I'm trying to do is be, you know, represent for us and the culture up there, too. So the more that you guys support me, I, I really do appreciate it. And thank you guys for having me up here, too. Thank you for coming. The very us. first time in 13 years. That's, that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> that don't make any sense. I'm like, what? That, I don't understand that. I really don't get that. I don't know. I don't it's because I never turn, returned your fryer to you. <laughs> you know we used to all live in like one, one big building. apartment complex and we were oh, like I Melrose know. Place tell me the story Charlamagne because you like to tell a story all the time no nah, right. it was literally Melrose Place we used to borrow yep. each other's fryers and yep. and books and I would say this about Charlamagne that, and I always say this about about him is that I'm so happy that people finally get to see how smart you are because you you just we used to have so many great conversations you used to put me on to so many books that i should read and like spiritual empowerment books and like just i, th I think it was a book called black pearls or pearls or something oh that yeah, had yeah a that bunch was of a, a daily affirmations for black people and yeah you, and you gave me the alchemist i never had read the alchemist that you gave yeah me. so yeah. i always tell you i was like people just don't know the the gift of the mind that Charlemagne is i mean like yeah we do a lot of stuff in this industry because it's entertainment purposes, but to actually see you shine and be like, show how smart you really are, I really uh, do you, admire Roxy. that. Thank you. You still the same DJ that I've met. Hey, you know, Roxy, you know there, there used to be somebody who used to live in that <laughs> building, and um, here we go. I got I got warned when I first moved in. It was like you need to watch Envy. One of the, one of the receptionists there said you should watch Envy. You should watch. Are you Envy. serious? I'm dead serious. True story. And I said why? And she said because. He's got a boyfriend in this building and he's the boy looks kinda he looks like you, he's like your size, and ball headed, and he comes over here and it's just like strange things. You hear strange sounds coming from that apartment. <laughs> You're such an ass. I'm dead serious. I don't, I'm dead is this a real story? I don't know how real that part is, but I, I think she did say there something was, like that. We didn't even have a receptionist at that building. Well, whoever worked in the front desk. Oh my god! One of my, the one of my desk. best friends lived in, in, in that building. Little Sean lives in that building and he's they he's Brown skin, dark skin, bald head, and short like Charlemagne. And that's what she the right way. He's brown skin, bald head, <laughs> short. <laughs> you know, nice build. So Say it. The I don't know. I think Charlemagne um, made that part up. <laughs> Charlamagne made that part up. <laughs> He made that part. You know, you know, he gonna lie. He that, made that part. Like, I'll say this: that was definitely not at the wing of my building, like on the way on my side of the building. You had to walk like a while before you even got to the section where I was oh, at. So man. I never saw what was going on on the on the other side of the building. I never heard that. All right, that's hilarious. All wow. right, <laughs> all right. Well, when we come back, positive notice at Breakfast Club. Good morning. Everybody, it's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for a positive note. Charlemagne, you got one? It is. Before before the positive note, though, I want to salute everybody in Charleston, South Carolina, man. Finally, after all of these years, we have the International African American Museum uh, opening up. Uh, the grand opening celebrations are next weekend. And so uh, Saturday, June 24th, mm -hmm. from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., I will be at Marion Square for a community celebration of the grand opening of the International African American Museum museum they got bb wine winings out there uh candace glover uh just to name a couple of people man but saturday june 24th 10 a.m to 2 p.m marion square charleston south carolina downtown charleston uh i'll see y'all next weekend okay and the positive note is this the purpose of life is to live it the taste experience it to the utmost to reach out eagerly and without fear for newer and richer experiences life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all breakfast club bitches y'all finished or y'all done